Hello, my name is Ken, and this is part two of Let's Code a MUD in C++11. In part one, uh, we talked about the, the purpose of this video series, which is we're going to explore the features of C++11, 14, and 17, and we're going to do that by making a MUD together, uh, which is a multi-user dungeon or uh, an online massively multiplayer game in text. Uh, and so we're going to have a server that accepts Telnet connections, uh, and we're going to manage uh, a server and a, a virtual world uh, together in this program that we're going to write together. All right. Um, so in the last episode, we, we made a skeleton, and we started uh, building our server class, which was going to manage our connections. Uh, we're using Boost ASIO, the asynchronous IO library, um, and we have an IO service uh, class that represents our event loop, and we have an acceptor class that's going to do the work of accepting new incoming connections on a port. And uh, we, where we ended yesterday, we were just about to try and figure out how to write this async accept class or function here, that uh, we need to provide it some sort of dynamic logic, some sort of handler that the acceptor calls when a new connection comes in. Um, and doing that, basically providing a function to a function, um, brings us to lambdas, which is going to be the topic of this video. Um, now, before we talk about lambdas, uh, what is a lambda, why might you need one, um, uh, what are they good for, um, let's talk about how you might solve this problem in C++ 98. In C++ 98, you sort of had two approaches uh, to dynamically pluggable logic. Uh, the first was you could inherit uh, from an interface uh, that would have a pure virtual uh, method, uh, and you'd use polymorphism. Um, or you could use a function pointer, uh, like, like in C. Uh, so first, let's look at what this would look like with a function pointer. Uh, so you'd have some sort of function. Let's call it open new connection. We'll make it a free function outside of our class. Uh, remember, function pointers don't work with member functions, which is one reason we, we need something a little uh, more sophisticated. Uh, and the acceptor wants, for its signature, it wants a boost system error code. So it can tell us uh, if it's calling back to us because it was successful or because there was an error. Um, and then we're going to do some stuff. And then we're going to accept another connection. Okay, so far so good. So how would we provide this up here? We would have to say, do it as a function pointer, open new connection. Um, and this this would work, except, um, except, accept. Um, accept here is our um, accept the next connection. And because this is a member function, I can't call it from a free function. Uh, and I can't make a pointer to a member function. So this whole approach is not going to work. Um, in comes lambdas. So what are lambdas? Lambdas are an object that represents a function. Um, so imagine if we declared this in line here. If, if we could somehow magically, we can't, but imagine we could just do this. Uh, a lambda is actually pretty similar to doing this. A lambda is saying, let's declare some anonymous function and the compiler can figure out the details of where that function lives. Uh, we don't need to access it except as this object. Um, and then that gets passed uh, to the acceptor, and the acceptor can call it. Uh, that, that, in a nutshell, is what a lambda is. Now, there's one little thing here. Um, what are these square brackets? These square brackets aren't just syntax. They actually serve a purpose. Um, these square brackets contain what's called our capture list, uh, which is anything from the outside environment here that we want to be able to use in the function. So if I had, let's say I had some magic number. Int magic number is um, 42. Okay, and I wanted to output the magic number. Well, I can't do that. Uh, in order to do that, I need to capture it from the outside environment. Uh, and this would pass it by value. This would make a copy of our magic number uh, that would live inside the function. So uh, one way to think about it, the way I think about it, is that these parentheses here uh, provide the list of arguments that the caller provides and the square brackets provide the list of arguments that we as the definer uh, of the lambda provide. So uh, two different opportunities to pass arguments into the function. Uh, one of the most important 
things that you're going to want to capture in a lambda is the this pointer. Um, and this is a, it's an object that's, that's specially recognized by the compiler. Uh, and what it's going to do is allow us to make this member variable call, this member function call. Um, as long as this is captured, we can access any member functions, member variables. I could uh, do something with the acceptor again if I wanted to. Uh, so this is going to be a, a very common uh, capture object. Um, okay, so this isn't, we're, we're close uh, to getting this async accept to where it needs to be. The only other thing we need to provide is we need to provide a socket. We need to tell the acceptor um, what, what it's actually accepting. So when the connection comes in, uh, what is the uh, socket object? This is a boost ASIO IP TCP socket uh, that, that's going to encapsulate uh, all of the, the, the connection details, all of the connection information for this one incoming connection. Um, and then we can do stuff with it. We can read and write the socket once it's been accepted. Um, so we can't exactly uh, do this because this would be a, a memory leak. Uh, we're passing by reference to the acceptor. Um, and as soon as we, we get out of accept, this socket's going to get destructed. So actually, it's not just a memory leak. This would likely be a segmentation fault. Um, so we could have it live down here. Do msocket. Um, and we could do some stuff with it, um, but we're going to lose track of it as soon as we make the next accept call um, because we're, we're then going to reuse that socket. Uh, for the next connection. So what we really want is we want a socket for every connection that comes in. So we're going to need a, co a collection of them. Let's let's make a vector. Let's make a vector of sockets. Oh, and I don't want to write that out every time. Well, let's think about doing a type def at some point. Um, but this will be m sockets. Okay. So um, when we accept, we're going to first let's make a new one. So we'll say m sockets. Um, push back a new uh, socket um, IO service. Yep. Um, and then this will be msockets.back. So the new one we just created will pass a reference to it uh, to the acceptor. And the acceptor can do some stuff with it. Um, in fact, first of all, let's put a little debugging message here. We'll say. Um, connection accepted. Let's put another debugging message up here because uh, otherwise this is going to look like the program is just hanging. I want to I want to make it clear that it actually did manage to start up successfully. So we're going to say server now running. Okay. All right. So this works as long as we don't need to do anything with the socket. Um, if we wanted to do something with the socket, if we wanted to read and write to it, uh, we would have to capture it. Um, now, that means we, we need to put it in a variable somewhere. So let's say I had, um, oof, this is where writing out uh, TCP IP socket all the time is going to get tedious. So I'm just going to create a type def and put it up here. Uh, called socket type. Okay. Now this is a vector of socket type. And I want to say socket type. Um, we'll call it socket equals msockets dot back. And then I could do some stuff now with the socket. Uh, I could say socket read, socket write, etc. But in order to do this, um, we'd have to capture it. We'd have to capture that that local variable uh, because it's not just a member variable. We, if it were a member variable, capturing it with this would be fine. So I could say I could say m socket stop back, okay? Um, and I could say socket type socket. You know, I I could redeclare it again in here because m sockets the collection is captured by the this pointer. But just for instructive purposes, um, if I wanted to do something with the socket, I would need to capture it. Now, 
Um, capturing it like this captures it by value. So this would actually be making a, uh, a new copy, a const copy of, of the socket. Uh, but we don't necessarily want to do that, uh, particularly because sockets are non-copyable. Um, socket objects, uh, only one thing can own a socket at a time uh, because it needs the, the destructor is going to close the socket and you only want that destructor to run once. If, if you had two copies of a socket, one of them got destroyed, the socket would be closed, then the second copy would no longer be able to access that socket. So sockets are non-copyable. So what we're going to do here is we're going to capture this instead of capturing it by value, we're going to capture it by reference. And that way, anything we do to the socket will be on that one copy of the socket that lives in the vector. Um, okay, so um, I want to wrap this in a connection class so we can start putting custom uh, logic around our sockets. But uh, before we do that, let's make one more lambda. Let's, let's make this uh, concept uh, a little more hammered home. Um, so let's make a, a way to cleanly shut down. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to create a signal set. And we're going to uh, react to sig int and sig term. So if uh, I did control C, I would cleanly exit my program. So the way we would do that in boost ASIO is we would have a signal set object. And this signal set is going to going to need our IO service and it's also going to need what signals we are um, responding to and let's just put up here we're gonna do an async wait we're gonna asynchronously wait for either of those signals uh, and then we're gonna do a lambda so um, This lambda is going to capture this because we want to be able to uh, reference uh, members of this class. Uh, oh, and it needs an argument. It needs boost system error code again. Uh, but also, it's going to need uh, the signal. It's going to tell us which signal it was um, that happened. And so let's let's just here we'll do a standard C out for debugging. We'll say server received signal. Uh, requesting shutdown. Okay, and then we're going to do some kind of shutdown. Uh, but how are we going to do shutdown? Um, well, to do shutdown, we said we're going to have to cancel everything that's running um, to deprive the IO service of work. So that means the acceptor, because the way we wrote it before, uh, the acceptor is always accepting. Once it accepts a connection, it accepts the next connection. Uh, so we've got to tell the acceptor to stop. And that should get our IO service um, to shut down. So let's see if we did this right. Let's see if this compiles first. That'll be our first test. Okay, no, socket was not declared in this scope. Okay, because it's socket type. That's easy enough. Okay, all right. So now, um, let's see. First of all, server is running. Does control C kill the server? No. Uh, why is that? Well, it canceled the acceptor, uh, but what that actually did is it, it called this callback, <laughs> which caused it to accept again. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put a if not error. Um, and there's a specific error. It's uh, operation canceled, I think. Um, but let's just do this real quick. So if there wasn't an error, then accept another connection. Um, Oh, and we get a, yeah, there we go. We just forcibly terminate it. Now, if we try to do control C, okay, our program terminates normally. All right, uh, so I'm gonna stop here. Uh, this was lambdas, this was a bit of a rush through lambdas, but I think we got to everything. We got to captures, uh, capturing this, uh, capture by value, capture by reference. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Next video, we're gonna do a little more program logic, uh, and then we're gonna start talking about R values, which is another thing that's, that's uh, very central to C++11. Um, I hope you liked it. My name is Ken, and this was uh, Let's Code a MUD in C++11.